Welcome to this mini lecture on the metabolic reprogramming in cancer. The three objectives are, one, to explain why all rapidly proliferating cells, including cancer cells, must have a different metabolic profile from the majority of quiescent cells in the body. Two, to outline the major metabolic differences commonly found in cancer cells. And three, to recognize alterations in the PI3 kinase pathway that would likely lead to tumor-promoting metabolic reprogramming. Our story begins in 1920s Germany, where Otto Warburg discovered that normal cells take up a certain amount of glucose and primarily fully oxidize it to carbon dioxide. However, cancer cells take up much more glucose and convert about half of it to lactate instead of oxidizing it all to carbon dioxide. And this occurs even in the presence of plenty of oxygen. So we call this aerobic glycolysis. He won the Nobel Prize in 1931 for these discoveries. But actually, shortly thereafter, this change in metabolism in cancer cells was largely forgotten until about the past decade. After nearly 80 years of being forgotten, we once again recognize that deregulated cellular energetics, or probably more accurately, metabolic reprogramming, is one of the major hallmarks of cancer. So what do you think are the two major goals in metabolism that need to be met for tumor growth? In other words, what do you think this, this um, cellular reprogramming has to look like on a big picture level? Proliferating cells need both lots of ATP, lots of energy to grow and proliferate, but they also need that biomass. They need the proteins, the nucleic acids, the lipids. Think about all the membranes that need to be synthesized, all those phospholipids, and a small amount of, of carbohydrates for those structural uh, carbohydrates. So this image, I think, nicely, nicely um, summarizes the differences in metabolism between your typical non-proliferating cell in the body versus the proliferating cells, including cancer cells. Note that uh, the two big inputs, at least that we currently understand, are glucose and the amino acid glutamine. For example, think about all the nucleotides that must be uh, synthesized in order for DNA to be replicated in every cell division, right? That is, uh, what, 12 billion nucleotides that have to be made in every cell every time there's cell division. So in summary, quiescent cells primarily are oxidizing glucose and fatty acids, utilizing the TCA cycle, producing the ATP they need to survive, whereas proliferating cells take up much more glucose. They also take up lots of fatty acids. Uh, they take up lots of glutamine, and they create the biomass, the lipids. They're creating um, nucleotides, uh, and they're creating proteins. This image summarizes some of the key steps in uh, cancer metabolism. So if we start with increased growth factor receptor signaling, we'll be talking about how for changes in metabolism, it's largely through the PI3 kinase pathway. There's increases in glucose uptake, so the glute transporters themselves, there's more of them in cancer cells. There's also upregulation of essentially all of the genes and therefore enzymes in glycolysis, so there's more glycolysis. There's a shunting of uh, some of the glucose into the pentose phosphate pathway to make the pentose ribose 5-phosphate, and we build nucleotides on ribose 5-phosphate. Notice that much of the uh, nitrogen to make nucleotides comes from glutamine, that amino acid that we've been talking about. Here we see there's increased glutamine uptake, the um, CMYK uh, Oncoprotein is, is involved in glutamine uptake. Okay, uh, We have uh, an increase in protein synthesis. There's an increase in amino acid uptake as downstream from growth factor signaling. Additionally, 
uh, pathway we'll be talking about more on the next video, there is export of citrate from the TCA cycle into the cytosol to allow synthesis of fatty acids that are used it to make lipids and phospholipids. Thanks to Tim Formosa for making this wonderful diagram summarizing much of the signaling that goes on in a cell. And the key parts for us at the moment are to recognize this portion is primar primarily where we have the changes in cellular metabolism. So again, downstream of receptor tyrosine kinase signaling, there's activation of the PI3 kinase pathway, which results in activation of the AKT serine threonine kinase, which working largely through mTOR, gives us increase in synthesis of proteins, fatty acids, lipids, and nucleotides. We'll finish this lecture with a more in-depth look at, at the PI3 kinase pathway. So we start here with a growth factor receptor bound to its ligand, so it's activated and the tyrosine kinase activity is active. That increases the activity of a phospholipid kinase called PI3 kinase. And what this kinase does is transfers the terminal phosphate from ATP onto a head group of a phospholipid. This inositol phosphate head group gets a third phosphate added onto it. That is what we call PIP3, and why it, the, the enzyme is called PI3 kinase. This PIP3 phospholipid that PI3 kinase created activates a protein kinase called PDK1, which activates another protein kinase called AKT. You should know this protein kinase, AKT. It's also called protein kinase B in Europe. AKT activates a kinase called mTOR, and together AKT and mTOR and probably a bunch of other signaling mechanisms cause these metabolic changes that are stimulated by growth factors. The P10 phospholipid phosphatase shown here is the breaks on this uh, growth factor pathway. So again, P10 catalyzes the hydrolysis of the phosphate that PI3 kinase put on, removing it, returning the, fit, the uh, phospholipid to PIP2 so that it no longer ends up uh, activating AKT. Most cancer cells have mutations that upregulate this pathway. These mutations can either be amplification or changes so that the, the um, growth factor receptor is, is uh, independent of its ligand. There are mutants in PI3 kinase that make it constitutively active or always active. Or P10 can be inactivated, so we remove the breaks from the system. The result is cancer cells with a highly proliferative metabolic phenotype. To summarize, cancer cells are metabolically reprogrammed to activate the anabolic synthesis of nucleotides, lipids, and proteins. And activation of the PI3 kinase AKT pathway is a common mechanism for metabolic reprogramming, with P10, a tumor suppressor, being commonly mutated.